Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our weekly object talk. My name is Eliana and I am a learning officer at the Jewish Museum. Today you're joining us for an object talk on a few objects from our collections that depict the JFS holiday home in Seaford, as our theme of the month is fun. These objects are part of a collection of over 40,000 in the Jewish Museum London's designated collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and history, and our programmes exist to explore connections between faiths and cultures. I'm now going to share my screen so that we can have a look at the objects more closely. This image is a black and white photograph showing the exterior of the Jews free school holiday home in Seaford, a seaside town on the East Sussex Downs. This photograph is from the Jews free school holiday home photograph album from the 1930s. The Jews free school was established in 1732 and is one of the oldest Jewish schools in existence. It started out as a purely religious, religious curriculum and then later introduced secular teaching. This next photograph shows the house from a slightly different angle. We can just make out a porch area to the right of the house with a deck chair where I'm sure saw many enjoyable times from the students and teachers that visited the house. The Seaford Holiday Home was established in 1923 by a Miss Title Baum, who was the headmistress of the girls' school at the time. Girls were accepted into JFS in 1822 and at first were mainly taught domestic skills. The JFS Holiday Home was built using money donated by an old boy. It was a bungalow and could accommodate 24 students, a teacher and a caretaker. The way it worked was that each student had one opportunity to go on holiday there during their time at the school. Parents were asked to contribute to costs, although if families weren't able to afford it, they were still able to go. No one was turned down. The house was ideally located in a beautiful spot high on the downs. The bungalow boasted its own garden and playing fields, and of course students were able to take trips to the beach nearby. These holidays provided excellent opportunities for staff and pupils to bond together in ways not possible in normal school hours. Now this photograph shows female students outside the house. And this one is from the JFS School Journey Centre photograph album dated 1931 to 1933. Now, looking at their expressions, most of them seem to be relaxed and enjoying themselves. Now, this photograph uh, shows us uh, what the students used to get up to whilst on this holiday. This shows a few of them on the beach standing by a breaker. They look as if they are enjoying the sea air, even if it might be slightly chilly. One of them seems to be in a jacket. This photograph seems to be more promising in pointing to the fact that it might have been good weather. This shows a group of girls in swimsuits on the beach with what I believe to be changing cubicles behind them. The photograph tells us that swimming might have been a popular activity during these trips. Swimming in the sea might have been a wholly new or novel experience for students who grew up and had spent most of their time in inner London or in the suburbs. Now the holiday home was even visited by the chief rabbi. Here in this photograph, we can see a group of dignitaries sitting outside the JFS holiday home. In this photo, we have the founder of the Holiday Home, Miss Leah Teitelbaum, with the Chief Rabbi, Dr. J. H. Hertz, plus other teachers and other dignitaries as well. Now, the JFS Holiday Home appears to have been used well and enjoyed by those who went there, as we can see from these photos. 
I'm sure it made a lovely change from sitting in classrooms day after day to being in the sea air and enjoying the many fun activities together. Thank you so much for joining me today. And please do join us again next week for another object talk. Goodbye now. <laughs>